Hi, Tony. Tell me uh, about the uh, Casa Tres Patios. Uh, how uh, was it born, uh, uh, the idea that you had uh, to found it, to find When um, Casa Tres Patios started in 2006, um, and it was originally conceived of as a space just to do experiments um, where local artists and uh, art students could do experiments in the different spaces in the, in the casa, um, simplement, simply in, to explore areas that they haven't hadn't had the chance to explore before. Um, in 2006, we did six periods of experimentation, six exhibitions, and then, um, then the grant ended. It was here on a grant, Fulbright grant, and we I moved to the back to the United States. When the idea was really just to open a space up for local artists, but. Um, In 2007, I was approached by the Museum of Antioquia and they asked me to, uh, they said if I wanted to come back, then I could start doing a residency program to invite international artists to come to Medellin as well, because they were planning a big event. With, the, with that impulse, um, we started our residency program and just started um, the whole, the, whole ball, the ball started rolling. So we started doing residencies, lectures, uh, classes, um, exhibitions, different activities. Um, around art and as a result of those activities and our continuing desire to try to make an impact in the local art community um, we decided we observed that when we did a lecture when we did uh, workshops it was more effective uh, and we had a bigger impact directly into in the local community so we started investigating more the educational side of art and uh, its potential impacts and as a result of that We've begun to work with the local uh, Secretary of Culture um, to develop a series of workshops for children and young people that use uh, art and the questioning that comes along with contemporary art as a platform for generating uh, reflections, uh, interpersonal reflections or social reflections in these, in these uh, children and young people. We still do exhibitions, we still have artists in residency, um, and, but today we're looking more at art Uh, and as a platform for generating pedagogical practices, and uh, that's that's generally our direction um, in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, me as a former developer, find interesting that, that you host a group of hackers. Uh -huh. Can you tell me a bit about them? Yeah, the uh, group of hackers is called. Uh, the, their name is called Unlocker. They're a group that's now been around for about <clears throat> six or seven years, if I'm not mistaken, perhaps longer. Um, and basically, we adopted them to a certain extent, or we adopted each other. Um, they were housed in the Museum of Modern Art um, prior to being in Casa de Patios. And uh, when they found themselves without a, without a home, at one point when the museum changed locations, um, we invited them to inhabit our garage space. And so, Um, we didn't know if it was going to be a temporary arrangement or a long-term arrangement, but that was that was four years ago, and uh, we've now developed a symbiotic relationship mm -hmm. with them. Um, they work on technological issues. They would do workshops with us, um, but they also help us with our computer systems and things like that. And we're now trying to work with them uh, on the administrative side, um, so they share their knowledge with us in their open source sort of way, which we think is a really healthy um, way, and we're trying to actually incorporate that in our pedagogical practices, yes, and we help them with the administrative aspects, and we help them with the, um, the legal um, structure that they need to, uh, to perform services and contracts with the local community and the local municipality. So we've developed this really um, nice, mutual, uh, mutually collaborative relationship, and mm -hmm. um, And we feel very fortunate because they're very un, uh, they're very open with their process and the fact that they've uh, shared with us that uh, their their uh, informal education process has really had an, a um, grand impact on the way that we perceive the pedagogical practice because most of us come from the traditional pedagogies and uh, this open source is very. Um, Utopian, but but very appropriate for the time we live in. Mm -hmm. and so we're really 
feel very fortunate that we have this have developed a symbiotic relationship with them. And apart from that, uh, what uh, common points do you see uh, between art and uh, hacking? I think or I mean, uh, develop uh, de developers at all uh, ICTs. <laughs> yeah, I think that. Um, I actually I'm starting, I'm really, these days I, I, I don't like to make those differentiations. I mean, I think that it's almost all the same now. Mm -hmm. I think that the idea of um, any kind of a development or any kind of questioning, any kind of, um, now the idea that art involves some sort of an investigation or some sort of a research prior to creating a piece or there's many practices that involve those kinds of prof a deep knowledge of some kind of a, uh, some subject with the idea of creating a piece of art that subverts it in a certain way or twists it in a certain way is a very similar practice to what I understand hackers do. When they know a system so well that they understand how they can tweak it or how they can turn it around or reuse it in a certain way. And I don't, so I don't really know that, I'm, I'm beginning to think that there's not really a difference. I mean, it's just it's a different, you know, we've got these different labels, but I'm not sure that it's really very much different. I think that it just has a different thing. Instead of using sculptural materials or paint or photo photographs, it's using technology or it's um, using, but hacking now has this more global uh, sense about it than, mm -hmm. than it had maybe 10 or 15 years ago. And so I sort of think of art as being hacking. I don't think of, I don't think of them as being really that, that different. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh.